Altaria is getting all the attention from this banner. But what about Zorok? Zorok. Was really good. It's your boy Rico. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Duel. I just want to first preface this by saying there is going to be no Featured Friday tonight because I got some things going on in about an hour. Uh, but I will make it up to you guys. I will stream tomorrow. We'll do it then. Um, but uh, oh, look at this! My meter is at ten. We are going to be. You know what? Okay, actually, okay, let's cover this real quick. Day one, um, I checked earlier. My meter was at five, and Dialga was like getting raped. What's going on? Did we did we turn did we turn it around? Day one. Okay, time for the announcement. Dialga, Palkia, Giratina. Okay, we are still getting raped. You're getting destroyed. What? I really thought Dialga would have been the most popular. But regardless, uh, my meter is at 10. So you know what that means. We're going to enhance this one. See? Uh, what? Oh, no. Can we not do this one anymore? Are you serious? Oh, wait. No, that was before. Okay, so we're going to we'll pop this. We'll pop the uh, locked booster. And we're actually going to jam the other one and get as many points as we can because we're at 10. Boom, 200 points. We need to get that EX cube. So let's pop this one. Okay, RX. I understand what you were complaining about. You, he made a video stating if he quit Pokemon Duel. And he was saying that you have to keep hitting the buttons because things weren't working. And I was like, what are you talking about? I understand now. Ooh, nice. Need some of that gold. 10 Carmenite. 15 points. We're going to do another one. Because now that the event started, I believe... Okay, good. So we're going to hit this up. Yeah, look, I'm just hitting this. Start. Yeah, the game is like slower for some reason. And then we're actually going to put an enhancer on it. Because I'm at 10, we're going to get rid of all of these. Well, we're going to do we're gonna do 100 gems worth. Or 125 gems worth. Get as much points as we can. Boom. Let's open it up. Yes. Ooh. Nice. That rare 180 is going to come in use for my Sableye if I keep using my uh, my normal league deck. But if you guys take a look at my current deck, this deck, I'm pretty sure Pokey Fodder is running it. Or not necessarily running it, but he did a video on it. Although I don't know what plates he was running. Um, I didn't get to actually fully watch the video because I was still at work, but I just saw the thumbnail, but I will go back and watch it. But I, yeah, I don't know what place he's running. So yeah, we're actually going to go through all of this. I'm actually going to leave a timestamp so you guys can skip all this if you don't want to watch it. One eighty. Um, it's the weekend, guys. I hope you are having a great start of the weekend. I have a three-day weekend uh, because Monday, I believe, it's George Washington's birthday. I don't remember. It's a U.S. holiday. It's a federal holiday, so that's why I get it off. How many more times can we do this? Three? Or two after this? I hope what if I get an EX cube out of here? That'd be awesome. 150. Alright guys, two more times. Again, I am absolutely sorry that you guys have to watch this. We don't have to. You could have fast forwarded to the actual good part. Ah, all right, one more chance. One more opportunity to get an EX cube. That would be awesome. Can we get 
can we do it? Look how many RX was right. Look how many times I got to freaking hit it, dude. That is pretty annoying. Okay. All right, last time. EX cube, maybe. Rainbow lights, rainbow light. Oh, okay. I don't even know if you can get an EX cube in here, can you? 210! Let's go! 210. Let's get this lock booster. Let's hope we can get it something good. Let's get an EX. Let's get another. We can start this right now, actually. Yo, this is annoying. Oh, you can. Okay. Alright, lock booster. Can we please... Let's get another Altaria. That would be awesome. Ooh. Glycopod! I don't even have one. This is awesome. I always wanted to run Glycopod. Didn't have one. Now I do. Sweet. All right, guys. All right. It's, I'm sorry. That that took way too long. Let's talk about this video. Let's go into the shop. Because I don't have this figure. I don't have the Zorok. And I've seen plenty of videos showcasing Altaria. Fodder. Kahankyo. Uh, everybody is, like, showing off this, 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 this monster. Altaria is a monster and it's getting all of the attention from the banner. But what I want to touch on is I want to show you guys Zorok, okay? Let's cover this figure really, really fast, okay? We know what the illusion ability does, okay? If the opponent, if you have not attacked a Mon yet, when you attack that Mon, you can switch with the Zorok. Take a look at Zorok's wheel. He's got the cross counter. If you hit 110 or above, you're dead. Uh, the Night Days, it makes your whites become missed the following battle. Not the following turn, the following battle. And he's got Sucker Punch. Nothing can safely attack this mod. Nothing can safely attack this mod. Lunala can't uh, safely attack this mod. Uh, so Galio can't safely attack this mod. If Lunala does in fact attack this mod, he is fearing the Night Days. Okay, because if he takes him out... You have to think. The opponent is most likely going to be running a dark energy. Therefore, this mon just goes to the bench. It's not going to the PC, and he's going to come back. And if he hits the Night Days, Lunala's White's going to be a miss the next battle. Same with Solgaleo. They they can attack freely into it. And the good thing about this mon is the ability. And I want to show off the ability. Now, I'm I don't have the gameplay. Like I will show you gameplay further utilizing this mon but i actually played against this mon and i'm going to show you how i got trapped in the illusion okay so we're going to jump in and we're going to watch that video so give me one second all right guys here we are and i'm going to kind of dissect this vi or this match so it might it might be a long video i mean after my rambling at the beginning i'm sorry i apologize for that all right stop so, I immediately want to take a look at... Oh, I'm looking at uh, my opponent's view. Okay, so he's got the Altaria into the Mega Altaria, level 5. He's got the Zorok. He's got Sableye. He's got Nala. He's got Zap Coco. He's got a big threat, okay? So, if you... Oh, let's take a look at his plates real quick. He's got Max Revive, Gold Block. He's got the Altaria Knight, which is cool. And the Scoop Up, okay? And if you take a look at my deck, I got the Twins. The first time I'm running Twins. This is, I've only actually, I've used this deck. This is actually the first time I've actually used this deck. I had, I used a different deck for two matches. But essentially, since the banner, I've only played three matches. This is my third match. Uh, double, um, double chance. Scoop up. Max revive. Goal block. Overdrive. Now, at first, I had Swablu into Altaria. And I'm pretty sure Showtime covered this in his Spotlight video. But... Here's the scenario. You can either run three Swablus and your opponents, when they attack, they're at negative 60 damage, or you can have three Altarias and you're at plus 60 damage. Now, here's the issue, though. If you're running all Swablus and you have an evolution on all of them, it kind of offsets it. So, like, if one gets to evolve and one doesn't, it, like I said, it offsets it. It makes it weird. I would rather, I think it's better to actually just have all the Altarias, in my opinion, because it it's better to have plus 60. 
I mean, plus 60 and negative 60 is kind of neutral, but when you start evolving them, it just it offsets it. Um, and there's, dude, there's so many possibilities with the Altaria. There's so many Banishes decks. There's um, Suicunes that you can bring in because if Swablu, or not Swablu, but uh, Altaria hits the purple, it also puts a marker on him. You can bring Suicune off the bench to remove the marker. You could run up there. You could, there's just so many possibilities with Altaria. But anyway, um, with this deck, I, I'm going up against the Zorok, and I was pretty happy. So let's let's just kind of watch it and see what happens. He brings up his Coco. I bring up my Coco, you know, setting up that wall. He brings up his Zap. Now here, I'm going to stop it. I was thinking, oh man, I don't necessarily have anything to counter the Zap. I could put my Zap there, but then he would attack with his Zap the following turn because he gets the plus 30. However, if I bring on my Altaria... I'm at plus 20 because I buff myself. So I'm actually hitting for 90 or potentially 110. If Zap takes me out, if I hit my flamethrower, he gets burned. However, Zap has that large uh, goal. So I am fearing that. That's that's one thing to fear, uh, especially on the opponent's turn because he's at plus 30. Well, he's at he's going to be at 110, right? He'll hit, well, he'll hit for a 111 because... Oh, no, 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 he's plus 30. I don't, there's no negative 20. My bad. Uh, but, yeah, I have a, I have an, op I have a chance of, it's, I don't, I don't know. What do you guys think about the Zap and Altaria matchup? Um, but, let's go back and continue. He brings up the Sableye, and this is where I want to talk about it right here. This is where I get trapped. He brings up Sableye, and I'm like, bro, that's a mistake. Why are you bringing up your Sableye? My Zap counters that Sableye so good. And I was actually surprised he didn't attack with his Zapdos. So I'm, I'm actually, I was actually happy. Um, so anyway, and he brings up his Nala right there. And you know what happens there. He brings up the Nala. I'm going to talk about it after. He brings up the Nala right behind the Sableye. Basically, that was such a brilliant move. Because I'm like, okay, I don't want your, I don't want your Lunala hopping over your Sableye, DCing, attacking my Zapdos. Not good for me. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna attack your Sableye, and he pulls the perfect illusion, and I was like, oh no, that is not good. Because if I hit my Thunder Crash, I hit for 140. If I land at this man's cross counter, it looks like he invested all of that in there. I'm dead. So I was really scared there. Fortunately for me. I hit the Roost, and he hit the Sucker Punch. I actually think that might be the downfall of Zorok, um, the Sucker Punch. I don't know how often he rolls it. I haven't seen it, actually, because no one's really put out a video about it. Okay, so let's continue on. He brings up his Coco. I have to protect my Zapdos with my Altair. So now I'm at plus uh, 20 on my Zap, plus 20 on my Dragons. So I'm sitting pretty good. He attacks the Sableye with really good play here. Uh, fortunately, I hit the dodge. I'm hitting my blues, which is weird. Uh, but this, I'm kind of scared here. So I want to talk about that play for a second. I didn't know what to do there. Because I was a fearing that this man was going to Mega Evolve. So I put my... Um, and I was also thinking about overdriving and putting my Zekrom there. But I was like, I'm just going to put it there and hope that my opponent does not Mega Evolve. I mean, I think my opponent's just going to attack again with a Sableye because Sableye has a pretty favorable match against... Uh, yeah, I think Sableye is actually a good counter for uh, Altaria. But okay, let's continue on. He does attack again with a Sableye and I'm like, oh, this is good. <laughs> and he lands the miss, man. I feel so bad there. I get the plus 50 because I buffed myself. I hit for 160 and that is... Couldn't have gone any better, and what I'm going to do here is I am going to DC, and I'm going to go straight for his Altaria, and I am going to try and banish this figure right now. Unfortunately, he hits the Flamethrower, and we are the D-Dance, and we tie. Uh, but the good thing is I paralyze him, so that's really good. So he, att <laughs> he attacks there, and dude, this... the So yeah, I'm going to stop, and I want to talk about this for a second. Zorok essentially i think is a brilliant figure however in this debut the two roles that zork had were very very unfortunate i can't wait to see actual more gameplay and i will provide you guys more gameplay because i know jake is working on a zork deck because i know he actually crafted one okay let's continue on i get to paralyze everything on the board is paralyzed at this point 
And I love it. <laughs> Did I attack? No, he attacked. There's no way I would attack. He gets the Night Days, and he just outright takes me out. I DC again, like I said. I'm, if he's not going to Mega Evolve, I am going to take this Mon out. I am going to banish this Mon. Okay. He hits 70. I'm like, if I, all I got to do is hit my 70. Damn. Get the dodge. Um, wait a minute. Actually, hold on. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. That was... I wouldn't have... Plus 20. That was dumb. That was that was actually dumb, because I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to take him out. That was a misplay. That was a complete misplay on my part. Yeah, for some reason I thought uh, I would have been plus ten more, but I was not plus ten more. Oh no, yeah I would have because of Coco. No, there yeah that was a good play. That was a good play. But anyway, he brings over his Coco to threaten the surround. I bring over my Coco to say nope, I'm not gonna let that happen. He comes up and he attacks my entire with this monster right, and I get the Parish Song. Okay. So we're gonna pause right here because I have options, okay? Okay, you already saw what I do. I, can, I hate how you can't stop in time. So I scoop up here. I had options. Um, what I was thinking about doing was bringing my Coco back to the center. Bring my Coco back to the center. That would threaten the surround on the Zorok to banish him. That would also leave. Um, his Coco open to surround my Zekrom. So I was I was thinking, I was like, should I bait him? Should I bait him to take out my Zekrom so I can banish his Zorok? Or I could have attacked again with my Zekrom and tried to banish the Altera. That's probably the least favorable thing to do. So what I did was I played the safe route. I decided to scoop up my Altaria. So, because I was fearing, depending on what I would do, I was fearing, what if the Zorak attacks my Altaria and somehow wins the roll, and then my Altaria gets banished? I didn't want that, so I took the safe route. I scooped up and uh, see what my opponent does. And my opponent scoops up for some reason because both entry points are gone. I guess he would—he just didn't want that to happen. Uh, he decides to take the entry point there for some reason, and then I get to surround his Altaria. I don't have to worry about the, uh, the Mega. <clears throat> and uh, feels bad, man feels absolutely bad. I, I really feel bad about that. Uh, so all I gotta do here is just survive the roll. Don't necessarily need to attack. He DCs with his uh, Nala, comes after, and basically he um, <laughs> he had to pray. And I get the Parish Song. And look at that. Both Mons, both Coco and Lunala are both marked. Zap, or he's gone. The opponent decides, like, ah, I already lost, and I'm just going to banish. So I get to banish two months, and it wasn't even with the twins, all right? Um, and you know what? We're actually going to cut it there because, like I said, I got to go. There's actually another deck I want to show you guys. There's actually another topic I want to talk about that. Talk about, but I'm going to save it for the following video. But, you guys, remember, tomorrow we will do... Uh, featured Friday. It's probably going to be around 12 p.m. my time, 12 p.m. mountain time. I'll let you guys know in Discord, but until then, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your Saturday. Peace.